This is a cruel and unfortunately true story that will leave no one indifferent. I warn you, if you listen to it until the end, your life will never be the same. Write down your impressions of the story, and we shall begin. The dark evening slowly engulfed the city with its long shadows. The streets seemed frozen in time. Officer Jackson Reeves sat behind the wheel of his patrol car, lazily tapping his fingers on the steering wheel. He was bored. He hated moments like these. Without tension or aggression, the streets were a dull scene, a theater with no audience and no actors. Rookie officer Steve Carter, sitting in the passenger seat, tried to ask a question, but Jackson cut him off with a sharp look. Don't make a sound, Jackson muttered as he lit a cigarette. We're looking for something interesting. Steve frowned but stayed silent. After months of working with Jackson, he'd learned one thing. Arguing with him was pointless. Jackson was unpredictable and often too aggressive. As they cruised the empty streets, Jackson was scanning for something. He was always hunting for his prey. His attention was drawn to a dark SUV parked by the curb. Someone inside was talking on the phone. Jackson felt a surge of adrenaline. This was the spark he had been waiting for all night. Pull him over, Jackson said with a grin, not even looking at Steve. Steve turned to him in confusion. For what? He's just sitting in his car, Steve tried to reason. Don't ask questions. I said pull him over, Jackson snapped, blowing smoke out the window. Reluctantly, under his partner's watchful gaze, Steve flipped on the patrol lights. The SUV slowed and pulled over. The man behind the wheel, a well-dressed black man in his 40s, carefully checked his mirrors. His alertness was almost tangible, but outwardly, he remained calm. Well, here we go, Jackson muttered, his grin widening. Let's see what he's hiding. The man carefully turned off the engine, rolled down his window, and watched as the officers approached. Jackson led the way, walking slowly, almost deliberately. His hands were relaxed, but his right palm hovered close to his gun. Good evening, officers. Is there a problem? The man asked politely, keeping his hands on the wheel, clearly knowing how to act in situations like this. License and registration, Jackson snapped, ignoring the greeting. The man didn't argue and calmly handed over his license and documents. Steve suddenly felt a strange sense of deja vu as he read the name on the driver's license, Michael Carter. The name sounded too familiar, but Steve couldn't remember where he'd heard it before. While Jackson checked the documents, Steve observed the situation from the sidelines. He didn't like what was happening, but he knew arguing with Jackson was useless. His partner always had the final word. What are you doing out here so late, Mr. Carter? Jackson asked, his tone dripping with suspicion. I was heading home from work, Michael replied calmly, his voice steady and confident. Officer, is there something wrong? Your tail lights out, Jackson lied, smirking. Steve said nothing, even though he could clearly see all the SUV's lights were working. Jackson was playing his game, ignoring any logical reasoning. Search the car, Jackson barked, nodding toward the SUV. Steve hesitated, feeling the growing tension. He knew they had no grounds for a search. The man before them was behaving completely appropriately, but Jackson was a different breed. He operated by his own rules, which rarely aligned with the law. Sir, we don't have a reason to, Steve began, but his voice was cut off by a sharp glare from Jackson. I said search the car, or you'll regret not following orders, Jackson said, his tone dangerously calm. Reluctantly, Steve approached the SUV and began the search. All the while, Michael remained calm, though his eyes told a different story. Steve felt the inner conflict. Whose side should he be on? He knew what he was doing was wrong, but he feared the consequences of disobeying Jackson. As Steve searched the SUV, Jackson continued to hover over Michael like a predator studying its prey. You think you're clean? You think you can get away with this? Jackson leaned closer to the window, his breath hot on Michael's face. I've done nothing wrong, officer, Michael replied looking directly into Jackson's eyes. For a moment, they stood locked in a silent battle of wills. Steve, standing nearby, felt like something was about to break. His stomach churned with nerves, 
he knew this was spiraling out of control. Then, without breaking eye contact, Michael slowly reached into the inside pocket of his jacket. Steve tensed, ready for anything. But instead of a weapon, Michael pulled out a golden badge. Officer Reeves, Michael said coldly. I'm Detective Michael Carter, your new supervisor. Jackson's world seemed to freeze for a moment. His grin disappeared, replaced by confusion and then rage. You're messing with me, Jackson growled, his hand slowly inching toward his gun. Steve froze. This was unreal, like a scene from an absurd dream. Jackson couldn't do this, couldn't allow himself to make such a mistake. Jackson wasn't backing down. His internal monologue might have been trying to justify his actions, but reality was slipping away from him. He felt cornered, though he was the predator who had trapped his prey. But now, he was the one caught in a trap. You think your badge means something? Jackson sneered, though there was fear in his eyes. You're just another clown in this system. Michael calmly looked at him. You've dug yourself into a hole, Jackson. You're no longer in control. You're wrong, Jackson hissed, drawing his gun and pointing it straight at Michael's chest. Steve, paralyzed with shock, suddenly realized just how far his partner's madness had gone. Fear and panic seized him, but he quickly snapped out of it. Jackson, no, Steve shouted, lunging between them. His body acted before his mind could fully process what he was doing. He stepped between Jackson and Michael, raising his hands to stop Jackson from pulling the trigger. Jackson froze. His hand still gripped the gun, but his fingers trembled as if weighed down by the decisions he had made. Steve, standing between him and Michael, raised his hands as if trying to halt not just Jackson's movement, but the very reality that seemed to have derailed. Put the gun down, Jackson, Steve said, his voice shaking but determined. This is madness. We can't do this. You can't. Jackson, feeling overwhelmed by conflicting emotions, anger, fear, shame, suddenly laughed. It was a short, harsh laugh, more of a sign of a nervous breakdown than humor. You don't understand, Steve, he finally said. In this world, there are no rules. I've told you this. I see through it all. These people, they pretend to play by the rules, but they have their own laws, their own methods. They think they can buy us, control us. What are you talking about, Steve whispered, his heart racing. This isn't the path you wanted to take. Michael Carter remained calm, though he understood the situation was on the brink. He saw how Jackson's mind was unraveling, how the man was sinking deeper into his illusion of control. This was his power, but only in his own head. Michael knew that confronting him directly now could only make things worse. So he chose to speak softly, steadily, though inside, his adrenaline was pumping. Officer Reeves, Michael said in a cold, calm voice, your game is over. You've gone too far. This isn't about what we can or can't do. You've already broken the law. The only question now is how deep you're willing to bury yourself. Jackson's eyes darted between Michael and Steve, and suddenly his face twisted with rage. You don't understand, he screamed stepping back and raising the gun higher, but still hesitating to pull the trigger. You're all part of the system. You're all trying to control me, but I answer to no one. You don't understand how it really works. Steve took another step forward, his hands still raised, praying Jackson wouldn't take a fatal step. No one's trying to control you, Jackson, Steve said slowly, never taking his eyes off the gun. You can still stop this. You can still get out of this with minimal damage. Put the gun down. Jackson seemed to waver. His face shifted from anger to doubt, from doubt to despair. The gun trembled in his hand, and for a moment, it seemed like he was about to give in. That common sense was regaining control over his madness. But then something unexpected happened. In the distance, sirens wailed. Someone in the neighborhood, having witnessed the scene unfolding on the street, had called the police. The sound of the sirens, instead of calming Jackson, pushed him over the edge. No, he screamed, his eyes wild with rage. I won't give up. I won't let you take me. Steve sensed that the moment had arrived. He had to act. Without thinking, he lunged forward, grabbing Jackson's hand with the gun. The weapon fired, but the bullet shot into the sky, hurting no one. 
a struggle broke out. Jackson fought fiercely, like a cornered animal. His eyes were wild, his face twisted in a mask of powerless fury. He tried to break free of Steve's grip, but the young officer, driven by desperation and fear, clung to his arm, not letting him aim the gun at Michael or anyone else. Michael, standing aside, watched the struggle unfold. He knew that interfering now would be dangerous. The situation had already spiraled out of control, and any action on his part could escalate it further. Finally, Steve managed to knock the gun from Jackson's hand. The weapon fell to the pavement with a dull thud, and for a moment, everything stopped. Officer Reeves was panting heavily, his face flushed and his hands were shaking. He seemed completely drained, as if all his energy had been exhausted in this one last act of resistance. Steve stood up and slowly backed away, keeping a safe distance. For several seconds, everyone was silent, processing what had just happened. Then Michael stepped forward, his voice cold and steady. Officer Reeves, you're under arrest. Your career is over. Jackson looked at him with hatred, but realizing he was out of options, he slowly raised his hands in surrender. The situation was quickly resolved. The arriving officers, surprised by what had happened, took Jackson into custody. Michael Carter, now officially taking his place as a detective, oversaw the arrest, and everything ended, at first glance, like a routine procedure. Arrest, protocol, interrogations. But for Steve, this night was a turning point in his life. When everything was over, he stood by the patrol car for a long time, unable to take his eyes off the pavement where it had all happened. His hands were still shaking, and his mind struggled to process what had transpired. He wrestled with his own fears and guilt. Could he have prevented this? Had he been complicit by not stopping Jackson earlier? Michael approached him, his calm demeanor contrasting with the inner storm Steve was going through. You did what you could, Michael said, placing a hand on Steve's shoulder. Sometimes the world is crueler than we can imagine, but you chose the right path. Steve looked at Michael, but his soul was still in turmoil. He couldn't find comfort in those words, though he knew Michael was right. As for Jackson, his new chapter was just beginning, now behind bars. His prejudice, anger, and madness had led him to the bottom, but in his mind, the same melody played on. He had always been right. The world was against him. The system hadn't changed him. It had only reinforced his belief that he was a victim in this chaotic world where right and wrong had long swapped places. 